Hi, my name is Owen. I'm one of the worker owners here at Urbane Cyclist in Toronto. And today we're going to look at cargo bikes. Uh, so first things first is what really is a cargo bike? Um, cargo bikes have grown in massively in popularity in the last few years. And a big reason is people are looking for alternatives to cars uh, and transit to get around. Um, and the reason you'd want to move to a cargo bike is if you have too much stuff to carry. It might be people, small kids, or just lots of things. Uh, so we focus mainly on compact cargo bikes and today we're going to be looking at two very popular models for us, the Yuba Combi and the Turn Short Haul. So the reason we're going to be comparing these two compact cargo bikes is they're very close in price point. Um, there's some really nice similarities and some pretty obvious differences. Um, first up, the Combi. This is going to be made out of steel. You'll notice a slightly larger wheel on it as well. Uh, both of these bikes you see in frame behind me are already accessorized a little bit so you have like a front load and kind of a rear cargo area that can be used for both cargo and kids and on the short haul in the back we have a 20 inch wheel while we also use an aluminum frame so one of the biggest standout features off the top uh, which we should just get out of the way is the rider height recommended rider height on these bikes is pretty broad but the short haul being a slightly smaller bike is better for slightly smaller riders so me i'm six foot two so i'm at the taller end for both of these bikes, but the Combi is a little more suited for my height. So for reference, the Combi is intended for a rider of roughly five foot to six foot six, where the short haul is intended for someone who's four foot 10 to six foot three. So that means I'm almost maxing out the height for the short haul where I'm pretty comfortably in the middle, but on the upper side of the Combi. Beyond the recommended rider height, it's obviously a little different between these two models. Probably the biggest difference we found was the max gross vehicle weight or the gross vehicle weight for each of these models. So to establish the max gross vehicle weight of a specific model, we need to have the weight of the bike plus the accessories, the rider weight, the passenger or passengers, and then the cargo weight. And all that has to equate to less than the max gross vehicle weight. For example, the max gross vehicle weight for the Combi is going to be 440 pounds. So me at 220, you take that away. The bike stock is roughly 50 pounds with these accessories, probably around 65 pounds. And you're left with a, in the ballpark of around 150 uh, odd pounds of potential passenger or cargo hauling ability. This is my pal, Adam, who's going to be my buddy. <laughs> All right, we good to go. Let me get, let me get ready to, to roll before you, you go for it. All right, I hope we're tight now. <laughs> we good? All right, here goes nothing. Okay, let's do a tight turn, tight turn and back. Oh, we got this. Oh, this is actually easy to handle. Okay, this is actually, I'm, I'm surprised. This handles great. I should raise the seat a tiny bit, but that's fine. The st stability through the roof. It's great. <laughs> For the short haul, on the other hand, the max gross vehicle weight is significantly less. It's actually 309 pounds. So the bike weight stock is 34 pounds. With these accessories listed behind me, we're looking at about 52 pounds. So when you subtract my weight from that, we're left over with about 58 pounds for cargo. And someone my size, that's quite a small amount of cargo, in my opinion. Uh, but again, I am a little large for this bike to begin with. So it's really great for a smaller rider. So we have some sandbags, which is 38 pounds. Whew. That's a heavy one. It's also not really an ideal way to load weight because it's top heavy, but we're going to make it work. And then, of course, we have some beautiful vintage cycling magazines right here. Uh, which equates to another 20 pounds that we're going to put up front here and uh, see how that handles. So it's still pretty responsive handling. It does feel a little twitchy, but not in a bad way. So if we sub in Adam instead of myself as our example rider, um, subtracting Adam's weight, the vehicle's weight, as well as all the accessories for the short haul, Adam will be left with 107 pounds of potential cargo or passenger carrying capacity. While on the Combi, 
Adam would actually be left with 223 pounds potential cargo or passenger carrying capacity. This is a great point to pause and reiterate that to safely handle uh, a large load, a rider should strive to only carry about 80% of their body weight. So the takeaway from max gross vehicle weight is really the most important is use a scale, weigh yourself. And keep in mind when you're weighing yourself, this isn't your first thing in the morning in the bathroom weight, it's your riding weight. Think about how much gear you're gonna be carrying on your body, get suited up, wear your shoes, and see what the scale reads. All right, so at this point, we're gonna do what we call get into the weeds. Uh, we're gonna go kind of front to back on the bikes. We're gonna talk about some of these accessories that we have equipped on these demo models here and uh, hopefully we'll answer most of your potential questions. So we've already tackled the fact that these both use different frame materials, the short haul being aluminum and the combi being steel. Uh, and obviously the next most notable feature you're gonna see is the wheel size. So the short haul here running on a 20 inch wheel and the combi is on a 24. So to kind of step back and think about proprietary things, Technically, we see 20 inch wheels on things like folding bikes. We see 24 inch mostly on like children's bikes. So if something bad ever happened to your wheel and you needed to replace it, like if you got into an accident, chances are you may have to build at something custom or get something direct from these suppliers. So you'll probably have to hit up Yuba for a wheel that was stock off a of combi or similarly turn go direct to the factory because a disc brake multi-speed wheel in these two sizes isn't necessarily the most common thing. Otherwise, both are using fairly standard components. So both are gonna be using a disc brake. So the short haul is uh, using a, a hydraulic disc brake where the combi is gonna be using a cable actuated disc. Um, some people may favor cable actuated for the ease of maintenance. Uh, but frankly, you're going to have a little easier uh, functionality and less hand strength is required to operate the hydraulics that you're going to see on the short haul. You can see again, we've, these are aftermarket. We have the, the, the transporter rack for the short haul and the bread basket on the combi. These both use a proprietary mounting system. So you're going to see holes in the frame and these are actually stock come with a quick release. So they're quite easy to change. What we do add is we do have to migrate the stock light from the fork crown to the front here. This is just a battery operated light, so it's pretty quick. Uh, we're on some Yuba models, you have to change wiring. So it's pretty straightforward, nice and easy, but if you're gonna be taking it on and off, it's something to think about. So moving to the middle of the bike, um, we do see single cranks, so single chain ranks, meaning it's what we call again a one by. Um, notably a little bigger here and a little smaller on the combi. And the reason for that is they are compensating somewhat for the size of the wheel. So the proportionate gearing, they're trying to kind of equalize it. Um, the feedback we got from a lot of staff when we were test driving this is uh, handling wise, the combi um, is very stable. It's clearly been, meant to be a bit more loaded, a little heavier duty, although it still is that compact, lighter duty cargo bike overall. Um, and the short haul definitely was geared more like a standard bike. Um, a lot of people did notice it's a very compact short front end, meaning the handling's quite responsive. So I think the takeaways we had often here was the fact that the short haul felt very nimble, more like a standard bike, um, but then the, the combi felt a little more capable. And it's very telling when you look at the max gross vehicle weight of these two models, and you'll see that's kind of the story that's told. Um, we have a couple upgrades here. Stock, uh, there, this comes with a single leg kickstand. We've upgraded here to the duo stand, which is recommended for a lot of the accessories we've installed here. You can see we have the clubhouse, and this is also the soft crate. This is intended for carrying small dogs on the back of the turn. And right now we kind of have a bare bones simplified version over here. This is the bread basket. So the bread, sorry. <laughs> This is the uh, monkey bars. The monkey bars are adjustable between all models of Yubas. Um, so this can fit on a Mundo, this can fit on a Boda Boda. Um, right now we don't have a deck on here because this was just kind of done up for show, but typically you're gonna wanna add either a deck, you may wanna add a yep so uh, seat on top for a small child. Um, and these also have an inner bar that can uh, kind of shrink this if you have a smaller kid just for a little more safety there. Uh, you'll also notice there are some receivers on the bottom of the combi that can handle some sideboards that are optional and can be added after the fact. Um, I think a very consistent theme with both these models is they're trying to keep them cost effective. So 
They're gonna come kind of bare bones, but have a huge backup cargo ecosystem you can kind of customize to your needs. Um, you'll also see moving to the, the actual rack here is probably the standout feature. And again, reiterates that max gross vehicle weight. And if you compare the short haul to the combi, the short haul here is, it is a proprietary rack made by turn, really tough little thing. There are actually six mounting points here. There's an additional inner mounting point, so it's extra tough, but it's hard to compete with a bolt-on rack when you have the combi, which is the whole frame is part of the rack. So this is just welded straight on. You can see it actually has six solid tubes that just go straight into the frame, um, and these large tubes just kind of anchoring the whole center of the frame right down to the back. So here we have a uh, short haul bone stock. So this is no accessories added. Um, so a couple notable points as well. Uh, these come stock with a Schwalbe Big Apple, which is often considered upgrade. That's a nice puncture resistant tire. Comes with full fenders, which is great. Um, so you can see no accessory mount installed, but there's numerous options. We can look at not just the transporter rack, there's little you know, bag holders and many, many, many options for, for this little add-on here. You can see there's even a couple eyelets. These can do cargo mounts, they can do bottle cages. There's a little fun accessory sign you can add. These are designed to stand vertically, so they actually are, are feet on the back of this bike. Um, so for storage, you can actually prop it straight up. So you can kind of tuck it into a corner of your house, even in the corner of the garage, which is a great choice for someone who has limited space. When you're using the, uh, the clubhouse, you can still store it vertically. Uh, we're on the combi, if you're using the monkey bars, you cannot. I think that's kind of everything. Didn't talk about the chain case. It's got this lovely chain case. Keep your pant leg clean. So as we take a closer look at the combi, you'll notice a couple little fun features. So again, starting from the front, you can see there's this little kind of odd addition to the fork. This is actually designed for a parking brake. There's a pin brake. Uh, you hold it vertically here, and if you stick it through the wheels and lock it to the other side, that's your little parking brake, kind of like the European-style cafe locks we're sometimes used to seeing. Another fun little feature that comes stock is the steering stabilizer. So naturally, the wheel does want to just spring straight forward, which is actually very handy. It's, it does have a sta couple standard bottle bosses, both under the frame and on top. Because this is a very low, slim standover frame, there's only room for one in the frame triangle and one outside. Uh, but another kind of fun feature that both of these bikes do is if you're adding on accessories like this, there actually is placement here up on the front of the bread basket on both sides, even moving to the back on the, uh, the monkey bars where you can add more hydration potential. So what you're seeing here is bone stock, except for a couple things. So there are two accessories added here. We have the bread basket and the monkey bars. Otherwise, this is how it comes. Um, and notably, we were showing the short haul can stand vertically. This can stand vertically, but not with the monkey bars. The monkey bars do have a slight bow and protrude just beyond the back of the frame. So it does limit storage potential if you're carrying maybe younger kids and have a YEP seat or the monkey bars installed. So what's our takeaway here? Um, I think the most notable things and kind of lines in the sand to take note of are max gross vehicle weight as well as recommended rider height. Uh, on paper, these function very similarly and between the different wheel sizes, different frame materials, uh, they end up with a pretty different max gross vehicle weight as well as recommended rider uh, height. So the short haul here comes in at a max rider height at six foot three, going down to four foot 10, and a max gross vehicle weight of 309 pounds. So it's very respectable, and that's in line with which, which uh, we'd expect to see on a pretty normal touring bike. A good loaded touring bike is usually around 300 pound capacity. In contrast, the Combi is recommended for anyone who's six foot six down to five feet tall, and has a max gross vehicle weight of up to 440 pounds. So for a very marginal increase in price, you get a vastly more cargo capability. So not to say it's better for that reason, it just might be different and better for certain people. I think what's really fun and exciting about the short haul is it's so compact, maneuverable, but still extremely capable. If we didn't cover something you'd like to learn more about of, with either of these models, please let us know in the comments, we'll be happy to get back to you. If you're curious more about some of the accessories that are available, we have links in the description as well. And if you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. See you on the next one.
Do you have sufficient? Is this sufficient? <laughs> running Stability through the roof. It's great. <laughs> okay, okay. So much fun.